So we're looking at this free pack, modal verbs revision page and activities. And you can download this from EnglishBanana.com. It's going to be on our podcast page, or you can search for it as well. The idea behind this page is really to have all of our modal verbs on one page. We've got uh, modal verbs, each one is numbered, we've got the use or some of the uses, the main ones, for each mode of verb strength, examples, and also we've got past forms and future forms. So this makes a really nice uh, revision page or sort of cheat sheet. You can use it as a teacher or give it to your students to learn. <coughs> you could use it to prepare a test, for example. And I like it because everything's clear, everything's on one page and it's color coded. Uh, we can see modal verbs which are uh, connected together, for example, must have to, uh, must not, and be not allowed to. So with verb allow, should and ought to, are together with a yellow color, can be able to, may might, and will. And I think it's helpful because we can see not only modal verbs but also the uh, past forms, also the future forms. And it's quite rare that we can see all this information in one single page, in one byte, as it were. So I'm happy about it. I hope you you can use it with your students, or if you're a student, you listening and watching, you can use it to learn English modal verbs. But what else is here? Th there are also some activities uh, to do. So on the second page, we've got um, complete the gaps one. Uh, this is one way to really freak out your students. Just photocopy this page, give it to them and say, okay, that's your homework for tomorrow. What? <laughs> They've got to go away and find out all this information. I did that for my students uh, recently. <coughs> and I did give them about a week to do it. And also I made it easier. I said you can work in small groups so you could sort of share the work. But it's a good activity, you know, what are uses of each mode of herb? What are the past forms? Strength. Of course you could give an example. <coughs> uh, for one of them, or two of them, or more. What are the future forms of must? You know, must doesn't have past form or, or future form, so what do we use? Then how do we express it? This is necessity internal. Necessity is something I feel that I must do it compared with obligation external, somebody else telling me to do something. So it's good just to look at these uh, words, even you know, the uses. This is the real key to it. I went through it with a Polish student yesterday. What is it in Polish? Prohibition, duty, advice, recommendation, logical deduction, ability, possibility. And he knew some of them, but not all of them. But these are modes that we have, uh, we can express via modal verbs. These are um, important things. We can't get far, really, without using modal verbs. We use them in uh, most sentences. Yeah. And these are the main uses. Of course, there are a few more. We could <laughs> make a longer list, but has to be on one page, I'm afraid, for this example. So, you've got this page, complete the gaps one, or give them 
the other way around, give them with the users and say OK, go away and research, look at modal verbs or you could elicit the modal verbs, modal verbs in the lesson time and then they do the rest for homework or whatever. So you've got different options here or you could uh, I'm not going to say take away all the information, but just leave a blank. But, of course, you c can do that if you particularly don't like your students. <laughs> That's possible. So, what about activities with this? <coughs> uh, modal verbs are kind of like things which get looked at individually in units in course books and it's like unit 5 it's must and have to unit 7 it's can be able to or can and could but it's nice to look at them all together they are a group really important group of auxiliary verbs in English so um, we've got here some modal verbs cards, of course you can cut out the cards or you can print them onto a thick card. Uh, these are the modal verb cards, so you cut these out and then you could just say to the students, okay, write down next to each one what, what is the use and then write an example. Or you could match with the use card, so this is exactly what's on the first page. So you would say, okay, well, it's future spontaneous, it's future prediction, future promise, future willingness, and so on. Yeah, so you can match those. Uh, <coughs> then there are two more sets of card time cards. We've got four different times in English, past, now, future, and regular time. So you should know what the what these times are. Regular time of course is in present simple for example something that happens regularly not it's not at any particular time it's not past present or future. I put now instead of present because uh, it sort of expresses the the fact that now it's always continuously moving um, what are sentence type cards? Positive, negative, question four. So w what I did with with these cards, I had each one sort of, they were cut up and stacked up on the table. And I asked one of the students to pick a use card. So they picked the use card. Then they had to tell me which modal verb um, went along with it. So, for example, they picked up suggestion and I elicited from them should, no should. And then they picked up a time card, uh, maybe past, for example. And then they picked up a sentence type, positive, negative or question, and so on. And they had to make the sentence with should in the past form uh, <laughs> with the negative sense or question form and they had to really think about it but we used the cards for this. Of course you don't need cards, you could just tell them uh, or use a spinner or use a dice sort of system, any sort of randomization so uh, they might look back at their revision page and see and see should, okay should uh, in the past is should or should have, ought to, ought to have. Yeah. What's the negative of that? Or what's the question form? Or, or whatever. And make a sentence. This is the challenge. So yeah, I did this with individuals, I've done it with groups as well. It's nice to focus on modal verbs and it's nice to do it all together so students can see the relationship between them and the different uses, 
the different relationships you know <coughs> how um, a mode of verb like can has the form be able to this is helping this is helping make the past form the future form of course past of can is could that's another useful verb I think uh, a bit of practice with modal verbs revision will give students more confidence to use them and when they think about modal verbs they'll think about them as, w as one group not as disjointed uh, episodes f from the course book scattered throughout the book uh, so the cards can help you that's optional you don't need to use them but what have we got here so this is another uh, board plan from one of the lessons I did I've been doing um, a lot of lessons with modal verbs while making this pack that that's in the uh, that's in my classroom so what we've got we've got um, modal verbs on the board I listed them I asked them to put them into groups not not past forms but um, the present forms for example yeah I listed the use so I wrote this but your student could write it in other lessons students have written this um, yeah I wrote a note for myself like what was the process here modal verbs in groups uses sentences um, what time is it in the sentence um, what are the past forms of each modal verb is there a past forms that then if not what do we use and then you could look at positive negative and question forms well, that's that's an example um, so this is a re sort of summary of the different activities ideas for activities complete the gaps one that we looked at that's a bit easier because it starts with modal verbs complete the gaps two was a little bit harder because it starts from uses and they've got to think of the modal verbs and they might get them wrong and then they might make uh, do the whole activity uh, incorrectly this was what we talked about with the pick a card method write or say a sentence you know this passes the time because students are really thinking hard you know what is past form of should uh, question f past question form of should with the particular use <laughs> it's good good fun now what's past question form of should in a sentence giving advice so they've got to think think about it <laughs> that's the aim of this work to make students think to get them to think for themselves but with some knowledge with some information about modal verbs um, matching we talked about that matching for example modal verb cards to use cards or think of a sentence and match it to a use or look in a book uh, find in a page you know underline all the use all the different sentences with modal verbs in any book in a novel in a comic book in a newspaper magazine article and then just think think aloud you know what use is each one what is it are there any more uses that we haven't thought of yeah that's another activity I can add it to this page <laughs> of course use real English realia not the course book yeah um, so let's go keep going through it uh, something else you could do is really focus on negative forms and question forms 
it's not in our uh, they're not listed on this page there isn't enough room there just isn't enough space to do it I'd like to do it maybe I will do it one day but you could focus on the negative and question forms in each uh, each time yeah it would be good to look at them give students some confidence but this is also in the activity with the cards pick a card it's positive negative and question form so it is covered a little bit there choose X number of uses e.g. 10 put them in random order and students create a role play or dialogue on an agreed topic so I did this one yesterday with a group of um, was five business people from a company they came for their regular lesson and it was really fun they had a list on the board list of modal verbs which we had we'd been looking at uh, let's see if I can find it yeah it was must must not should can uh, might and will or and can with a different use as well so it was necessity prohibition advice ability permission slight possibility and future promise so this makes a nice activity for students to do to work in a group uh, maybe you're talking about a topic like films like we were so we said a place we thought of a place at the cinema and they've got uh, two four six seven modal verbs here seven uses they've got to do them in order think of a dialogue or role play um, at the cinema or it could be at the supermarket or at home or at the at college or whatever doesn't matter but it's quite a it's nice problem solving activity they've got to put in uh, seven modal verbs in order so maybe one in each sentence or just in the order of the dialogue and this is something they can get on with in gr small groups or pairs and you don't need to do very much just let them do it wind up wind them up and let them go it's kind of activity which is always nice to do because it takes the pressure from you you're not a performer at the front of the class they're working on a project they're working on a worthwhile cause worthwhile think so that's a good one to do and it's not so much about grammar in particular but it's speaking and listening but using grammar of course using language to make something so this was the the basic lesson plan that I, I've been using elicit the modal first try to elicit everything put them into groups for example must and have to together should and ought to together they like to be together some of these modal verbs discard past forms so, so tell them we don't want those at the moment <coughs> try to make a list like what's on the first page of this activity write them in a column on the board like in the photo elicit the uses if they don't know you know you have to tell them or uh, ask them to go and find out somehow if they've got access to a computer or a dictionary or phone this information is in any good dictionary write a sentence for each pair modal verb and use pair well that's that's half the lesson gone isn't it doing that work in pairs though don't sit there doing it on your own silently work together share the work what time is it in each sentence present future now or regular time it's rarely going to be regular time with modal verbs let's be honest regular time is best for present simple but sometimes we see it we see regular time elicit past forms and more future forms 
So most often modal verbs are talking about the future. We know that as a fact. Um, but of course there are past forms. Sometimes there are present things which are about now, but not very often. So mainly future, but don't let it dominate. Write a number of sentences with different times and different sentence types, positive, negative or question forms. And this is quite a nice activity as well. Number 10. Rewrite each sentence that you've done to mean the same thing, but without using the modal verb. For example, I can swim. I'm able to swim. That's very good. Ability. But how can we say this without modal verbs? Challenge students to spend the whole day or the whole lesson without using any modal verbs or you could set a sort of a sort of punishment for each time you hear a modal verb used in the <laughs> or think of a role play um, or dialogue without any modal verb is it possible of course it's not a real punishment but just a, a sort of a joke one you know you lose a point or something uh, I can swim. It's perfectly expressed with can, with the modal verb. But we could say, I know how to swim, or it is possible for me to swim. Uh, or swimming is one of my skills. So we can do it, but challenge your students to think of, you know, if they've got 10 sentences with modal verbs, then they have to. Uh, write write them again or say them out loud again without use, using the modal verb. And what can they do it? Can they think of it? Have they got language skills, vocabulary skills? Maybe they have. Maybe that it's possible. Maybe they can. Oh, I lost a point if I said that, yeah. <laughs> um of course these are all similar activities uh, this is another one randomized students pick all or some of the following criteria use type time place that's a new one and noun for example at the shopping center or anywhere that's interesting for your students or on a given topic like shopping could be on the ski slope on the topic of skiing, working in small groups can be any topic, doesn't matter, <laughs> but it's good if it's interesting for your students. Students write a sentence to match the criteria, so um, if you you know you could have five students standing in a line, one of them says a use, one of them says a type, one says a time one says a place and one says a noun and the rest of the class have to have you know one minute or 30 seconds 40 seconds to write the sentence and the the best one the most most accurate <laughs> or most correct one could get a, a point or get a prize you know so it could be like that or it could be in groups but the more random the better and maybe they'll find that they can't make a sentence they get a use and a type and a time which just don't match together maybe it's regular time that's the problem yeah. but that's not a problem for you because it's you're able to explain it talk about it you're discussing modal verbs and Think about why is it like that? Now I had an example <coughs> in one activity that I did. Um, it was looking at slight possibility. Slight possibility may in regular time. Is it possible in regular time to use may? Hmm. It was a brain teaser for me had to really think about it, probably not. 
No, probably not. But maybe yes. Maybe you can think of something where we, we're using may in regular time. Every day I may have a biscuit. Oh, that, or that's permission, but it's not a possibility. So, let's draw a veil over that that one. But yeah, maybe there isn't there isn't a sentence. And that's good as well, that's useful to look at, to discuss why is it like that, what happened, how, how uh, what can we do about it? Nothing. That's the answer. So, and this is a team thing, a winner is the group with the most points, you could give a prize, etc, etc. But really they're studying modal verbs, and they're studying grammar, but in groups and in teams and with the whole class and with a fun activity. They could do the the writing with modal verbs later at home, for example. So I thought for this one I will uh, set a quiz for you, the listener or viewer of this modal verbs revision think. Uh, and here are ten, 10 questions, and I'll give you the answers a bit later on. Um, get ready with a piece of paper and a pen, if you're going to play along with this. Write down a sentence that matches my criteria. For example, number one, ability. Positive sentence, past, at a school, pencil. So those are the five things. Ability, positive, past, school, pencil. Maybe pause this recording or video and uh, write the sentence. See if you can do it. Ready for number two? So prohibition, negative, future, supermarket, trolley. So you must use this criteria. You must use these five things in your sentence. And I'll give you a, a example answers in a minute. Three, future, promise, question, past, garage, car. Four, advice, negative, future, park, football. Five, obligation, external, positive, regular time, bus station, skateboard. Six, formal permission, question, future, granddad's house, piano. So you should have six sentences now. Uh, don't forget to pause this recording between each one. Write down the sentence with the criteria. Number seven is future prediction. Negative. Future. News agents. Newspaper. Of course you can change the places, the nouns in your lessons to match something that your students are interested in. This is just for example. Number eight, duty. Positive. Now. Beach. Ice cream. Nine. Slight possibility. Question. Regular time. Old house. Creaking door. Hmm. Number ten. Last one. Necessity. Internal. Positive. Past. Ferry. Bottle of water. So of course you can do five of these ten, fifteen, twenty, fifty, or a hundred, however many you want. And you could use this maybe at the end of a lesson if you've got five minutes extra time. Uh, just write on the board some criteria or elicited 
from the students even better. Okay, everybody, give me a, give me a use. Prohibition. A type negative. A time future. Place supermarket. And a noun trolley. So your <laughs> students can elicit these things, and then they've got a few minutes, two minutes to write x number of sentences with this so it's something as a f it could be a filler as well once you've properly once you've done it properly okay so let's look at the answers so if you haven't finished writing please pause now and you're back in the room let's look at the answers then so we've got it uh, it was possible for each sentence um, if you're on the video you can see this there we are but I'm going to read it for the podcast listeners so number one at school I could or uh, used to be able to used to we can use here at school I could write with four pencils at the same time Pro uh, number two we're not going to be allowed to borrow a trolley for our party on Saturday so it's future prohibition uh, one was ability positive past three future promise question past did you say that you would fix Dave's car did you Four, advice, negative future. You didn't ought to be playing football near the boating lake this evening. Not, maybe not a very common sentence, but it's possible here. Yeah. Five, obligation, external, positive, regular. Uh, because of you, I have to ride to the bus station on my skateboard every Friday. It's hard to get the regular time sent with uh, these modal verbs. I have to say that something I've learned from doing this. Six. Formal permission question mark and future. Might I play your piano for a few minutes, please, Grandpa? Might I? Not a very common question form, but for some very privileged people it might be might I uh, yes you might number seven future prediction negative and future of course my favorite newspaper won't be on sale yet it's prediction eight duty positive now you really ought to put your ice cream wrapper in the bin you know nine slight possibility question mark and regular question form regular may the door creak like that every day while we're here uh, not very natural some combinations may not be possible in natural English I've put here the same about formal permission it's not very often used might I yes you might it's more often used as in a uh, slight possibility. Yeah, it might rain, for example. But may the door creak like... No, it's not a nice uh, option. But if you're ra doing this randomly, you might get this kind of combination. And you have to deal with it and just say, no, we can't think of anything. Then it's not very common. 10 is necessity internal, positive, past, uh, I was so thirsty that I had to buy a bottle of water on the ferry. And I really try to draw the distinction for students between must and have to. Must is really f about the person, uh, person thinking something they need to do themselves rather than somebody telling them yeah 
I must buy a bottle of water. It's something I need. But it's necessity, internal, internalized. But I have to buy it. It's maybe because somebody is telling you to do it. Why they would tell you, I don't know. I really don't know. But that's the fun we can have with modal verbs. And this is the free pack. You can download it from EnglishBanana.com. No, it is. You're very welcome to use it. If you use it, please let me know how you do, how it goes. Here we are. It'll be on the podcast page, and I'll probably add it to the worksheets page. So maybe do a search if you can't find it. And if you have any feedback about it, you can contact me at info at englishbanana.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.